you've been solving equations for a while now, so it's not that big a deal. Then your teacher goes and throws a variable up in the exponent. Now what are you supposed to do? Don't worry, I've got you covered. What's up, y'all? I'm Tom. This is Like a Math Class, and let's get to solving exponential equations. When you're solving exponential equations, you generally start with this question that looks something like this. 5 to the x power equals 125. Remember here that this 5, this 5 here, this is the base. So if I've got some base going to a power, then I'm always looking to see what power of that base is going to get me to this result. So if you're looking at this one, well, if I'm, if I'm just doing my multiples of 5, 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So that's pretty straightforward. You take 5 to the x power is equal to 5 cubed. So therefore, all you have to do is drop the base. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on a second. Drop the base. Yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Hold on, hold on. I digress, I digress. So um, you're left with x equals 3. Now every time your teacher says drop the base, I want you to think of me doing that. Maybe even maybe even do this in class. Please, oh, please, promise me you'll start doing this in class. That'd be, that'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. Okay, so um, it's it's actually that, just that, that straightforward. This is the foundational idea of what we're getting to, is if we can if we can get rid of the base or drop the base, then we're gonna have just x equals three. So let's look at a slightly more complicated problem. And here we're gonna solve for x when 16x is one over 32. Well, how am I gonna start this problem? The first thing I'm gonna do is I want to look to see, is there a base that I can take both of these numbers to? So having a fractional number makes things a little bit more difficult. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make 16x equal to 32 to the negative one power. That way I could just be focusing really on what these bases are. Now the other thing I want to do is 16 to some power does not get me to 32 or 32 to the negative one power. So I need to start breaking down how this number is constructed. So I could take four times four, that equals 16. And does four times four times four equals 32? No, that equals actually 64. So I'm not going to be looking at a base of four. So what I'm going to do then instead is I'm going to go down. Since 4 is uh, a perfect square itself, I'm going to think 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's also 16. All right, so can I get to 32 with a base of 2? Yes, actually, if I take 16 times 2 is 32. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 16 and I'm going to rewrite it as 2 to the 4th power and that whole thing to the x power. And then that means I'm going to have 2 to the 5th power. So I'm going to rewrite 32 as 2 to the 5th power to the negative 1. And now I'm going to use my power of a power rule where we said if you've got a to the m power and that is to the nth power, then that rule says that we have a to the m times n power. So I can use this property right here and I can look at this and say I've got 2 to the 4x power is equal to 2 to the negative fifth power. Now let's give ourselves a little space so we can drop the base and we're going to have 4x equals negative 5 and then when I solve for x I know that it's going to be negative 5 over 4. So that is this equation solved for x. Now you could have used logarithms to solve this as well, but I'm, I'm going to be focusing strictly on using exponential properties for this. And then when we get into the logarithms and what is a logarithm and how do I find logarithms, then we'll also look at problems similar to these where we are solving using either exponential problem solving or logarithmic problem solving. So that takes us to our next example where we're finding m when 6 times 4 to the m plus 2 is equal to 384. Okay, so now this is a little bit different than the one above because now I've got 6 and 4 to the m plus 2 power. This is where we're going to be focusing because here's our base of 4. And 6 is not the same base. I cannot combine these two things because they don't have the same bases and they don't have the same exponents. So my rules of exponents say that nothing can be combined here. So what I want to do is I want to try and isolate this. So I'm going to take both sides and I'm going to divide that 
by 6. So I'm going to take this divide by 6, and I'm going to take this and divide by 6. So I've got 4m plus 2 is equal to 64. And we just saw in the previous example that 4 cubed is 64. So we can change that over as well. m plus 2 equals 4 cubed. Now, you could take this all the way down to 2, change the 4 to 2 squared, and take 64, 2 to some power. You'll still get to the same result either way. But I'm going to use 4 because it's a little bit less work. So now I've got the same base. So you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop that base, and I'm going to be left with m plus 2 equals 3. So m is going to equal 1. So there's our value of m in this situation. Now we've got one more example to go. Before we get to that, give me a thumbs up uh, if this has been helpful. Give me a thumbs up if this has been the most cringiest thing that you've ever seen. Or just give me a thumbs up because you want to. Our final example says solve for x when 9 to the x power is equal to 3 to the x power plus 6. Here we've got something a little bit more unique. Now we've got an addition sign thrown into this whole mix. Um, and we've got different bases. So I'm still going to start by looking at if, can I change this thing to a 3, base 3? And of course I can do that. So we know that 9 is equal to 3 squared, so I'm just going to substitute that in there. So 3 squared to the x power is equal to 3 to the x power plus 6. We saw up above that if you had a to the m power to the nth power, then we could write that as a to the m times n. But you know you could also have a to the n power to the mth power, and that would still equal a to the n times mth power. And because we are multiplying, it doesn't matter if we do m times n first or n times m first. So I'm going to use this property to rewrite this thing, and now I think something's probably going to start jumping out at you. Now I'm going to just swap those two things around. I'm going to use 3 to the x all squared, and that's going to equal 3 to the x, and that's going to be plus 6. Now, I don't know if you've noticed something, but if I write let's let p equal 3 to the x power, then what I have here is p squared is equal to p plus 6. Well, now this should start jumping out at you. Okay, I'm going to have a quadratic equation. So let's move everything over to the other side of the equation. Okay, so now we're going to start solving like we do with quadratics. So p minus 3 and p plus 2, that's going to equal 0. So that means that p has to equal 3 or p has to equal negative 2. But remember, we're not talking about p, we're talking about 3 to the x. So 3 to the x is equal to 3, or 3 to the x is equal to negative 2. Well, 3 to the x equals 3. Well, of course, here, x is going to equal 1. That's one of our solutions. And 3 to what power is going to give us negative 2? Nothing. Nothing's going to give you a negative 2 result. So this is not possible over here. And you're going to have only one solution where x equals 1. Why is that not possible? What power of any positive number is going to get you a negative result? It's not going to happen. It's not going to be 0. It's not going to be a negative number because a negative number just makes it uh, changes the position of it in the fraction. And it, if you put a fractional number in there as well, that's still not going to get you there. So you're really just stuck with not possible. And we'll look at that even more when we look at logarithms. So that's solving exponential equations. Make sure you check out this next video that will help you as you continue to learn more about exponents and logarithms. I'll see you in the next video.